When the book first came out, that final book in the series, I read it six times in the first six months after the date of publication. You know, I just read it from front to back and then I read it from back to front. Uh, the second time, just starting with the final chapter and going back a chapter at a time uh, and rereading it and then I read it front to back again another four times. So um, I love it. Uh, I think they're some of the most uh, beautiful books that have been written in the past generation. Uh, my own uh, deep conviction is that, and you see it in this last book, and uh, I've seen an interview with J.K. Rowling where she uh, claims to be a Christian believer. She worships at a Church of Scotland. And uh, it doesn't surprise me at all. You know, in the very first book, uh, she has a statement that uh, self-sacrificing love is the greatest power in the universe. Uh, and at the time I didn't know she was a Christian, but I thought, you know, here's a woman I should pray for because if she's not a believer, she's not far from the kingdom of God to, to understand that. You know, any Christian can recognize that is indeed the greatest power in the universe, the power of self-sacrificing love. And in the last book, of course, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, um, that is while self-sacrificing love is a theme of all seven of the books, you know, it really is the very heart uh, of the final book where Harry's prepared to offer up his life for his friends uh, and gives himself up uh, cheerfully to death out of love uh, for others, imitating what his mother had done for him when he was a baby uh, to give up her life for him, which is the context in which J.K. Rowling makes that comment the first time remarking on, on the love of Harry's mother for him and sacrificing herself that he might live. But as, as you read that last book, um, it, it's fundamentally a, a kind of meditation on the last months of Jesus' life as Jesus prepares himself to go to the cross to offer himself up out of love for us, to sacrifice himself. And... Uh, Harry, as he basically goes to his cross, not a cross of course, but uh, to his uh, meeting with death, um, there are many, many allusions to those last months of Jesus' life uh, in that part of the book. And it's just very, very beautiful. Remember one of our students here, um, B.J. Rowland, uh, he and his wife had just gone to work in, with Labrie in Rochester, Minnesota, when I was speaking about this at the Brie conference a couple of years ago, he said when he, he finished the book, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, on a Saturday night, and the next morning he went to worship and they celebrated the Lord's Supper, and he said, I had the deepest, most fulfilling experience of the Lord's Supper in my life, in my Christian life, because that book helped me understand Jesus' sacrifice for me uh, more deeply than I have ever understood it before. Uh, and I can, I can say amen to that. Uh, I think it, it is just beautiful. J.K. Rowling herself says that, that before she published the first book, she knew exactly where the seventh one was going. She didn't want to reveal it, of course, to her, her readers, because she said there were many people who wouldn't have read the books if they knew that I was a Christian, if they knew uh, where these books uh, were going what the central theme was going to be uh, at the end uh, of death out of love for others and then resurrection from the dead, which is what's happening in the, in the final book. But she said, from the beginning, uh, long before I wrote it, this has been my favorite part of the series, uh, book seven. You know, it's my favorite book. And uh, as you know, of course, in that final book, there are for the first time a couple of biblical quotations. Uh, the one is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. She doesn't say it's a biblical quotation, but those, of course, are, are Jesus' words. And that's really what the book is about. Uh, it's really a, the question for Harry is, what will his treasure be? Will it be, will it be power? Uh, will it be fame? Will it be success, wealth, honor for himself? Or, or will his treasure be 
loving others, no matter what that costs, uh, and seeking to overcome evil for those he loves, the evil Lord Voldemort, who of course is a, a picture of Satan, uh, seeking to overcome him uh, that others might live and be free from his tyranny. And that's really what the book is about. What will Harry's treasure be? Uh, and he chooses the treasure of laying down his life for others uh, and giving himself up to defeat evil. The second biblical quotation uh, is on his parents' gravestone, which he finds in the churchyard when, when he uh, and Hermione go to the little village uh, where they had lived and where they were buried. And it's on the gravestone, it says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And uh, it's just very, very beautiful. And of course, that's a quotation from the Apostle Paul. And that's a, the theme at the end of the book, where Harry actually dies and then is raised from the dead, uh, comes back uh, to life and meets Dumbledore in the afterlife. It's a very moving scene. And he meets him at King's Cross, which is uh, just beautiful. And of course, the railway station from book one is King's Cross, where they go off to, to Hogwarts, the wizarding school. But in the final book, you see quite clearly why it's called that, uh, King's Cross. But it's sort of like a heavenly version of, <laughs> of King's Cross, where, where he meets Mom Dumbledore in the afterlife and uh, then comes back, is sent back uh, into this world uh, to carry on serving uh, here. 